Joining us now, former FBI Director James Comey, the author of a new book, Saving Justice, Truth, Transparency and Trust. Director Comey, good morning. Good morning. Unfortunately, uh, we've got a lot of events in the news to talk about, and I'll start uh, with your old post. The FBI, it has issued a bulletin warning of armed protests, not only in, in Washington, D.C., but all 50 state capitals. How extraordinary is a warning like that and how concerned are you? Well, it's extraordinary because we live in extraordinary times where a president and his enablers have tried to motivate people to violence. So it doesn't surprise me, although it's very, very unusual. The FBI's job is to gather information and push it out to the people who could secure those locations. So I think they're right to be concerned. It's right to be prepared. What's appalling about what happened on January 6th is the lack of preparation. We can't repeat that mistake. And I want to talk about uh, the Capitol riots that happened last week, but let's let's focus on this current threat environment. Do you feel law enforcement can handle something like this? Is law enforcement going to be ready this time? Well, law enforcement definitely can handle these kinds of riots, attacks, and civil disturbances. If they have the information they need and they prepare, this is something law enforcement was built for. Again, what's so painful about the Capitol is the lack of preparation. But adequately prepared, the 50 states can secure their capitals and the United States can secure its capital. How concerned are you about inauguration? You know, obviously it, it traditionally takes place on the west front of the Capitol. There are also plans for uh, President-elect Biden to process, have a, a little bit of a walk, an escorted walk outside on the streets of Washington. Do you think any of that should be changed or looked at again? I don't think it should be changed. It was important for all of us as Americans after 9-11 not to let terrorists win, an expression I'm sure you remember, by altering our lives, our national life in a fundamental way. These are terrorists, and it would be a mistake for the United States of America to change our rituals, the things that mark our civic, important civic events because of them. And so we can be prepared, we should be prepared, but we should act like the country we are, free and open and safe. What was going through your mind as you watched what unfolded last Wednesday at the Capitol? Well, like all Americans, I hope I was sickened by the attack on this citadel of our democracy. But given my career, I was also really angry about the failure to secure in the face of a threat that was obvious on a date that's been marked for 130 years, January 6th. You knew it was coming. You knew it was literally coming to you from the president's rally walking down Pennsylvania Avenue. Very, very upsetting to watch it happen anyway. And how to explain it? I remember after 9-11, you know, the, the commission concluded in part it was a failure of imagination, a failure to even contemplate that airliners could be used as weapons and flown into buildings on the east coast of the United States. This isn't a failure of imagination, a bunch of thugs coming in, breaking windows and beating up police officers. That's not some ingenious plot. So where was the failure here? Yeah, I agree with you. It wasn't a failure of imagination. It was just a failure to see a threat that was in, in bright daylight coming at you. I don't know. It's going to be really important for there to be some kind of commission to understand. So what happened here? Not just at the Capitol with the Capitol Police, but did they get the information they need? Did they see the threat the way so many other agencies must have seen it? I don't want to prejudge, but it's going to be really important to understand that. This is complex, as you mentioned. There were some officers that day who were heroic, and at least one paid with his life. And then there are other officers who have been suspended because of some of their conduct on that day. There are police jurisdictions around the country looking into whether some of their own members of law enforcement participated. How much does that concern you, particularly when you're talking about now having to secure these future events? I mean, is there a concern about some kind of inside job? It's something that a police leader has to look at because police officers are people. Some of them are going to be drawn into the same fog of lies that surrounds so many millions of Americans. But in the main, law enforcement officers are putting their lives on the line for the Constitution that they swore to uphold and to protect. I'm not worried about that in the main, even though a leader of a department has to understand every single member of his or her department. The FBI has received now 70,000 tips. It's a huge amount of work. How important is it for the FBI to track down those responsible and, and follow up on it, um, even though it may be incredibly time consuming? And for some people, it might just be a case of trespassing. 
It's important that every last person who entered that Capitol be found and charged. They need to feel the force of the rule of law. They need to feel the American people's will to make sure that we're a country that doesn't accept attacks on our democracy. I know my colleagues at the FBI are are honored and excited to do this work, and we'll do it 24 hours a day until they find every one of them. The attorney general of the District of Columbia has says that uh, said that he is looking into whether or not the president violated D.C. law, D.C. code in inciting a riot. That's an open investigation, according to the D.C. attorney general. I want to talk about your book, um, because at the end of it, the epilogue, I don't want to give away the ending, but I think you'll forgive me. You say that given everything that's happened, you don't think the president should be prosecuted. Has your opinion changed in light of what happened on Wednesday? And can you explain your thinking? Yeah, it was a hard question when I was writing that back in the fall. It's even harder now. The president needs to be sanctioned for his behavior and held accountable. I think it's important that he be impeached. I think it's important that local prosecutors in New York continue to pursue the garden variety frauds he surely committed before he became president. I just don't think it's in the national interest for Donald Trump to be on our television screens every day for the next three or four years as part of United States versus Donald Trump in the District of Columbia. I don't think that helps Joe Biden heal a nation. I don't think it helps us coax the millions of Americans who have been defrauded, who are caught in that fog of lies. I don't think it helps us move them back into a healthy place. And so it's a hard, painful decision, but I still think it would be better for this country if we move past a fallen and corrupt president and turned off the television lights on him, which in some ways would be the greatest punishment he could imagine. You know, comparing anything to 9-11 is a dangerous business. But one thing I remember is how it was an inflection point and, and it really woke up America to a threat that had been there all along, but perhaps we had not recognized. You know, a, a lot of us have friends and families who support the president. They, they now believe that there was something wrong with the election. How, what do you do to, to change minds and change hearts and, and open people's uh, eyes up to facts? You can't shout at people to convince them that they've been defrauded. One of the hardest things in the world is for a victim of a, of a fraud, of lies, to admit that they were fooled. I worked criminal cases where the victims of a fraud would come to support the fraudster after he pled guilty. Mm -hmm. So it's not about shouting at them. It's about coaxing them and urging them and letting them find their way out of that fog of lies. It's a really hard thing that takes years, and it will take years. But it's hastened by them seeing competent, honest, empathetic leadership, which I think they're going to see starting January the 20th, as we heal this country, both spiritually and from this virus. Well, James Comey, the former FBI director, author of the book, Saving Justice, Truth, Transparency and Trust, with a lot of really fascinating stories from your time, your decades at the Justice Department and in law enforcement, sir. Thank you for your time this morning. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.